So I've been buying K-pop albums and K-pop related things since 2017. Now I haven't really been keeping track of how many albums I have anymore, but I can confidently say it's at least 600, well, 700 albums. So needless to say, I buy a ton during the year. You've probably seen the big hauls I do on my channel. So I'm obviously spending a ton of money on this stuff. I mean, I get told I'm rich all the time, which it was true. And I don't know, I wanted to figure out how much I spent on K-pop in a year. So I did that. This video is literally a year in the making. And before we get into the whole meat and potatoes of the video, I'm going to be up front and say this isn't like a Look how much money I have to spend on K-pop. You know, that's not, that's not what this is. I want this to be kind of an open way of showing people how much it really does cost to have a collection like I do for peeling back the curtain a bit. I mean, after all, it's not a secret I spend a ton of money. And honestly, it's actually a little embarrassing to be so open about how much money I could have actually had and instead spent it all on stupid K-pop stuff. I'm comfortable sharing my numbers. I find this stuff just very interesting. Respect people's privacy on whether or not they want to disclose how much they're spending. You know, do not just be going around asking other K-pop collectors how much they are spending on stuff. It's not, not cool. If they want to tell you, they'll tell you, but they probably won't. So there's me. I'll tell you. Anyway, on to the video. So last year in January, I set up a Google Sheet to keep track of every single thing I bought. I took note of the date I purchased it, the amount of shipping it was, what store I bought it from, if there was a discount, etc, etc. Because like, yeah, it'd be interesting to just see how much I bought, but I also just want to know like, you know, what groups am I spending the most money on? What stores are robbing me in shipping? I could even track what months I went a little overboard on. I mean, I guess we can drop the number now. <laughs> so after buying 243 albums, four DVDs, and 98-ish extra stuff, and by extra stuff, I mean Seasons Greetings, Light Sticks, Pillows, whatever, I spent $10,875.47. Seeing the number. I... <laughs> <laughs> so where did all that money go? Let's take a look. Breaking it down first by albums, DVDs, and the extra stuff. Albums, I spent $5,226.76. DVDs, $265.97. And extras, $3,480.26. And I mean, you don't have to be very good at math to realize that is not adding up to $10,000. That's because the remaining $2,250.60 went to shipping. I can't, I can't, that's so much. That is 20.69% of the money I spent towards K-pop. I mean, at least I was able to save $348.12 through discounts. So that's, that's cool, I guess. Well, here's a lovely little graph of kind of a monthly breakdown. You can see I uh, started to get a little out of hand as the year went on. I do want to point out that in September, you can see I did significantly spend more on the extras, whereas usually I'm spending more on albums. And there's a video on that. Stay tuned. I do also want to point out that the amount I spent on albums isn't the most accurate representation of what I normally do, and that is because I did try to partake in some video call fan signs, which meant I was buying more than I normally would. And the albums I bought for those video calls alone cost me $433.06. Well, $763.83 if you want to, you know, include the shipping, which like, it's a lot of money but it's still probably pretty small for your typical video caller person. You know, someone who's actively trying to enter video calls. So what stores got my money? So I ended up buying stuff from a total of 30 places and I'm including, you know, not just like the albums and stuff, but unofficial merch as well. Anything K-pop related is included in this. To a uh, little surprise, 
my number one store was Music Plaza. It's not even a competition. And I went ahead and calculated what percent of the total amount I paid went towards shipping alone. And for Music Plaza, it came out almost at just like a nice 10%, which isn't bad. It's actually one of the best shipping percentages I had. I was also able to save over $150 in discounts there. They had like a reward program and with how often I shop there, I'm getting mad discounts. Now the stores that did rob me. These stores all had about 40% of my money going towards shipping. And what I mean by that is at checkout, say the order total was $100. That would mean $40 is going straight to shipping and $60 is for whatever I'm buying. That's a lot of money towards shipping. Ugh, there they are. Now, I'm typically only buying from these shops for signed albums, fan kits, video calls, or I simply cannot find the item anywhere else. These are not shops I just casually buy from. And another thing I will kind of point out with this, normally when you purchase from international sites, the album prices are reduced, say compared to like Music Plaza. The cost of the album at K-Town for you is going to be lower than the cost of the album at Music Plaza. But Music Plaza is going to have cheaper shipping, while K-Town for you is going to have way increased shipping. So sometimes it does end up leveling out, but a lot of times it doesn't. So I highly recommend finding out what your order total is and then making your decision. Now also when you shop at these international sites, you sometimes can get the item faster because they will just ship it directly to you. Whereas when you pre-order, say from like Music Plaza, you have to wait for the album to ship to Music Plaza and then ship to you, which can take a longer time. And so sometimes you can justify, okay, I'll pay more in shipping if it means I get the item faster. I do not do that. I am very much just trying to do the cheaper option. I will wait forever for the album. That's a lie. But I'll wait a while. Plus with my channel, I take months to get unbox these anyway that I'm really not in a rush. But what I'm saying is this this is all things to consider from where you're shopping and why these shops have such a high shipping percent because although the shipping is high the cost of the items are lower. Okay so now what groups took my money the most? So from the 57 k-pop artists that I bought here are the top five. It shouldn't be that surprising that my top five are all alts it is funny that my two older ults being Oh My Girl in Red Velvet got overtaken by the new ults. If you have followed my channel this past year, I really went through an NCT Dream and TXT rabbit hole. And because of the rabbit hole, I ended up back purchasing a lot of their old stuff, including some rare limited edition stuff, which is why I spent so much for them. And then Itzy's high because they had a six version album, eight if you include the limited, and then those no bad day kits that I bought, that was a lot. I also want to point out that any solos or subunits from groups, I just put into their mother group. So that's why Red Velvet has a lot of money on here because of Wendy and Joy, yada yada yada. And here's a lovely little pie chart so you can see you know, the nice distribution of my money amongst some of the top groups. And that is the breakdown of what I spent on K-pop in 2021. Without having a breakdown of what I have spent in the past years, I can confidently say this is the most I've ever spent in a year on K-pop. And with that, I'm going to lead into how I kind of want to finish this video by talking about my financial plans for 2022 in terms of K-pop. First off, I do plan on doing this again. If this was a video that you enjoyed, please let me know and I can do this again in 2023. Regardless of if I make a video again next year, I'm still going to do this. I want to keep track of my purchases. And now that I have my breakdown from 2021, it'll be kind of fun to compare what changed or didn't change about me. <laughs> I want to add more details to the breakdown. Extras is so vague that I think I could easily break it down to more of like, you know, fan kits, season's greetings, light sticks, whatever. I just want to split it up a bit without making it like too specific that it becomes overwhelming. I would love to spend less money this year. 
Oh man, that would be so nice. <laughs> I don't know if it'll happen. I do want to point out that once again, I am not rich. Can't clarify this enough. I work two jobs. I work 60 hours a week. I think it's a little fair that I can spend some extra money to treat myself with some K-pop stuff, okay? But I do want to spend less money. I want to cut back on some groups. I'll be in a better place this year in that I won't have a rabbit hole to really fall down like I did last year. TXT and NCT Dream, as you saw, I spent a lot of money on just those two groups and I don't see that happening this year. I can't think of any existing groups that I would just fall down this rabbit hole and want to buy all of this stuff for. There's like maybe one group I can think of, but they're not going to be at that alt status that TXE and NCG Dream just kind of skyrocketed to. It would be like I buy one version of all their albums, which I don't know. It's just my cat's tail. <laughs> I want to not do video calls this year. I mean, I've already broken that <laughs> promise because I've, I've already purchased stuff for video call. It's just so much money and I don't even like doing the video call itself. I mostly only do because I want the signed custom album. Plus, it's looking like there's going to be something this year that I'll be spending my money on that I didn't have to worry about last year. And that's concerts. Concerts have already started back up and that is going to cost me so much money and I would rather any of that video call money go straight to the concerts. Ugh, it's going to be so much if concerts really pick back up. But anyway, that is the end of the video. That is what I spent on K-pop in 2021. Please let me know if this video was interesting and if there's any other stuff that you were interested in knowing about. That could be very helpful for if I end up trying to do this video again next year. I hope you are having a lovely time of day wherever, whenever you are. And this is goodbye for now. Bye.